Hi, and welcome back to the Kent ISD Remote Learning Bootcamp Organization and Communication Module. My name is Keith Tramper, and I'm your host through this module. This segment is about learning management system principles. I want to start us out by asking, what is a learning management system, or an LMS, as some people call it? Well, an LMS is a place where you can store all of your files. It's a place where all your stuff goes onto the internet. It's a place that helps you organize learning material for your students so that they can learn in easier ways. It's a place that gives you a chance to understand where your students are learning and maybe where they need further support. And it's a place for communication and dialogue so your students and you can maintain dialogue through remote learning. I wanna get you to reflect on one question that I have for you. And that is, what experiences have you had as a learner using an LMS? Think about your days in college. Think about things that you've learned through professional development. What made those things good experiences? And what made them bad experiences in that LMS? Take a moment to pause the video and think about that question. As we progress through this module, I want you to keep those things in mind. What made the, those experiences good or bad for you as we look through these design principles for an LMS? Back in the first module, Ron talked about a concept called Atnapuffs. That is, all teachers need a place for their stuff, right? We need a spot online for all of our learning materials to exist. Now, I'm going to one-up Ron with a new acronym because we work in education. We love acronyms, right? My acronym is called ESNEOP, okay, and this focuses a little more on the learning management side of things. ESNEOP stands for everything students need in one place, okay? So all of your learning materials, all your communication with students, all the assessment that they've got, and access to external learning sites. We all use lots of different sites across the web to help our students learn, but all of that starts inside of our LMS. It's one place for all of our students to get everything they need. So it's one thing to have everything online, but it's another thing to make sure that it's structured so that our students can get in and learn. So one of the people that I follow, especially when it comes to Google Classroom and how to navigate that with students, is Matt Miller. He's the author of Ditch That Textbook. I've linked an article here in the slideshow and in the uh, guide doc for you, but he gives four different structure, structures for ways that you can organize your LMS for students to quickly and easily navigate your LMS and get learning. The first is sorting your, your topics by week. You could sort it by a unit. You could sort it by a subject or a topic, and you could sort it by file type. I hope that you'll take a minute to read that article. It's a very short, concise article, but it gives lots of great ideas for how you can use um, structure within your LMS. Every LMS has some sort of organizational structure, um, so use those. Use them to help code your lessons for students. Things like using tags, categories, folders, icons, colors, emojis can help students make connections between concepts without you having to say anything at all. So use those things. They may feel like an extra step, but they help make that learning connect easier for your kids. Lastly, make sure that you use your own style. You know your students better than anyone else. You know your instruction, your style better than anyone else. So take time to find your own style within the LMS that supports learning in your classroom. But the main thing is whatever structures you decide on, make sure that they focus on your students learning. That is the most critical thing about having an LMS. Everything should be guiding towards helping students learn more effectively and more efficiently. Getting our students to collaborate and engage in communication and dialogue is a really important part of the classroom learning that we have. And in remote learning, that can feel very weird, right? We don't have a lot of experience with how we get kids to do that online. So think about the tools that are out there. And you're going to hear a bunch of them throughout this course. I'm just going to highlight a few and, and put in a few ideas with you. The first is G Suite tools. Those are the Google Docs, slides, sheets, drawings, forms, all the different tools that come inside of Google Drive. 
those tools are set up so that multiple people can work in the same document at one time. There's even some chat features that allow you to chat if, even if you're not in the same space. So leverage those tools to help your students work on something together um, or even provide peer reviews or peer feedback, uh, teacher feedback um, along the way. Those tools can be really helpful and they're built into a lot of the things we're already doing. Flipgrid's another tool, you'll hear that come up in the video recording and screencasting module later on, um, but that tool is a great tool for student discourse and getting students involved in online discussions. So go check out Flipgrid. Most LMSs have some form of a discussion board, a way for students to communicate back and forth about their learning content. Those tools can be really helpful towards getting your students to get a deeper understanding of your content especially in online learning. The most important thing you can do as a teacher is to provide that space and provide clear expectations for how those spaces will work. So think about things like, what, what are you expected to post? Okay. Am I posting a response to a question from the teacher and then responding to two other people? Um, what do those responses look like? How do I encourage my students or give them the tools to be able to further learning through asking questions in discussion boards. When we first started to shut down because of coronavirus concerns, we saw a huge movement over to Zoom um, for some synchronous learning. Now we're going to address Zoom. Craig is going to talk about Zoom later on in um, a future module on synchronous sessions. But one of the key things that we see for student discourse inside of Zoom is breakout rooms and using breakout rooms to get your whole class together and then break them up so that they can have discussions as if they were face to face in the classroom. So utilize tools like what you see here to help you generate some dialogue and collaboration between your students in online learning environments. And also don't forget about your role. You play an important role in providing feedback to students to help them generate better, deeper discussions. So don't just check out. You need to check in with your students every step along the way in these discussion areas. We're going to talk about communication plans in an upcoming segment here in this module, but I wanted to touch on a couple things with LMSs before we get there. The first is that an LMS can actually complement the external communication that you're making to students and families. The LMS is really built for talking to your students. Um, but many LMSs have some aspect where you can set up parents as users as well. One more thing to think about is an LMS communicating with your students. Um, try to make your communication as clear and concise as possible. Um, remember that your students are getting a ton of information from every angle. Uh, so take time to think about what's the most important thing for you to share with your students. How do you keep it concise? And could it wait for another day? another message. LMSs and online learning provide us an opportunity to work with personalized learning. When we're in the classroom and we have to give instruction to a whole class at one time, it can be tough to think about what things are going to connect with all of your students. Well, in online environments, we don't necessarily have to do it that way. We can think about all the materials that are around the internet that we can use to support student learning. We can even create some of our own and give those things to each individual student that may meet their needs. So um, you can bring in a variety of learning materials, things from YouTube, things from uh, Discovery Ed, things from different tools that you might be using around the internet and help provide students a more differentiated approach to teaching. In the spirit of providing students with what they need, you also have to think about accessibility considerations. Think about students' home languages Think about students' special needs that they might have, and try to find materials that will work to help support their learning in those areas. Before we wrap up this segment, I want to drive home one point, and that is your LMS doesn't exist solely for remote learning situations, right? They are critical to remote learning situations, but they are something that can be used consistently in every part of your learning activities, even in face-to-face -face instruction. Okay, so I want you to pause and think about this question here for a second. How could your LMS support day-to-day -day learning under normal circumstances? That's it for new content in this segment. Now it's your turn. 
use your LMS to begin building an online classroom or course. Your school may have already selected an LMS for you to work in. If you don't have one, that's okay. Um, we suggest that you start in Google Classroom because there are lots of resources to help you get started. The deliverable targets are use the design principles from this module. Consider LMS applications and situations not just for remote learning, but also for face-to-face -face learning. When you're done, take a screenshot of one portion of your LMS that illustrates something you implemented from this module. Then paste your screenshot in your copy of the Remote Learning Bootcamp checklist. After that, you're all set and you can move on to segment three of this module. Thanks for listening and have a great day.